Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is the pattern review of the McCall's 7971 dress. I really like this. I think it's a really, really flattering and interesting dress. I was worried because it's it's a very basic bodice when you look at it from the front. The interest is all in the back because it does have an open back and open back. So there are two hook and eye points at the top and the bottom of the the top of the bodice back and then there's that little triangle just above the skirt waist that gives you a little a little hint a little hint of back there which I think is actually a very kind of sexy thing I, I, I like that I like that part of my body it kind of goes in it has a little dip I like that. I, I was a little bit worried about making this dress because I prefer to wear bras and I was thinking I'm not sure how I'm going to do that with this dress. I was thinking about putting an exposed zip along the upper back part. I was thinking about putting in an invisible zip. I was wondering if, you know, it was going to be, this was going to be big enough that I could get it over my head. In all honesty, I actually really like the hook and eyes. I may put one extra hook and eye in the middle of the back piece. But as is, if I am wearing a black bra, or even the pink bra that I have on now, you can't really see it. I, yeah, I would, I would totally wear it like this. This is a, another of the custom cup size bodices, and I have gone for a D cup again, and I have ended up with ever so slightly pointy ends to my darts. They do actually point at my apex, I promise. <laughs> Not like the Vogue dress that is causing all the controversy over in the waffles. That, oh, that bodice is an in, that dart is an inch above the apex and actually right up to the apex so I'm I'm going to be working on trying to sort that one out but you're not here for a review of that one you're here for a review of this dress so uh yeah this is the skirt that the model is wearing on the envelope she is clearly taller than me because obviously mine comes down past my ankles I, I mean I suppose hers also kind of comes to her ankles but it just looks like it's a little bit shorter on her, which I, mean, I really like the length of this and I also like the thigh high split. I had a particular moment when I was sewing this together when I was like, I know the split goes over the left leg, I know that, I know that, I know that. I was looking at it and I was like, oh god, I've sewn it to the right, over the right leg, I didn't mean to do that, and I hadn't, I just put the pattern panels together incorrectly, so uh, yeah, label your pieces people, do as I say, not as I do, although I do talk you guys through that when I've, I'm putting the skirt together in the sew along about putting pins in to certain pieces because there's obviously notches as well but yeah ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> this was some fabric that was gifted to me by the lovely Anna for Christmas and it was voted for by the Patreon peeps. They had three to pick from and this is the one that they chose and I'm really grateful that they did. There is a giant long list of names running across to the bottom of the screen here to say thank you to all my Patreon peeps for having some input in the sew alongs and helping me pick the fabrics for the patterns that I want to make. And they were all, names will also probably be going a little bit slower at the end of this video as well. I will definitely make this again. I got this out of just a little bit over three meters of fabric and for a full maxi dress I am very impressed with that. This fabric was I think 140 centimeters wide so it's not even the widest fabric you can get. This is also a directional print so all of the pieces had to be put on obviously in the right orientation I couldn't nest any of the skirt pieces and still I got it out of just just over a smidge over three meters of fabric so I, yeah that bodes really well because I do have quite a few lengths of fabric three meters used to be my go-to length when I bought fabric I've now gone up to five unless it's incredibly expensive fabric there's some wool that I'm looking at some floral printed wool that I'm looking at on stitch fabrics 30 pounds a meter. I'm not gonna buy five meters of that. Yes, tangent, sorry. I, yeah, I, I, I really, really like this. I did end up doing a little bit of tweaking with the back of the bodice because I did find that the, I'm gonna call it the keyhole part above the back waistband was kind of gaping a little bit and it was something that I had read on pattern review and pattern reviews of this dress that people did need to tweak the back a little bit. I think somebody tweaked the back so it looked a lot more like a refora reformation dress and then somebody else tweaked the back and put a different skirt on it to make it look a lot more like the thing that she had in her imagination but there was note of the gaping at the back there. One of the important things with this is you want to, to try your dress, you need to sew your hooks and eyes on before you finish the dress and you want to try it on once you've got the skirt attached to the bodice but before you put the back facing on to finish off the skirt because if you do need to just 
you know move the fabric down just a little bit to get rid of that gaping that will be the point that you can do it so it is important to try your dresses on at certain points don't finish the entire thing and then try it on ask me how i know i should know better i really should know better because i keep telling people to make muslins i really should know better <laughs> but yes i am I'm in love with this dress, I think it's beautiful, it's really comfortable to wear, it skims everything but it's not completely skin tight so it's, and obviously it's made out of a viscose fabric so it's nice and breathable for the hot months and obviously we have a lot of ventilation going on in the back as well and the thigh high split so yeah this is something that I will definitely be making again, it's a dress that I love, I think it's beautiful. So I didn't put pockets into this dress, it does come with pockets and it does come with the instructions of how to to put them in. I've also done a tutorial on how to French seam your pockets into a side seam, um, which is finished that I prefer. The entirety of the skirt of this is finished with either bias binding on the thigh high split and the hem. So these were all sewn by hand, uh, finished by hand, hand hemmed. But then the rest of the skirt is finished with French seams. So if I did put pockets in, I would want to French seam them in. And as I mentioned, there is a tutorial for that and I will have that list listed in the description box down below as well. The entirety of the bodice is lined, which I very much like. There is a few things that I might change with the waist seam. So as I mentioned, there is a facing that finishes off the back edge of the skirt. And that's because obviously the bodice, there is a gap. And so the, the, the top edge of the skirt needs to be finished. And I do like the facing finish for that but I might actually draft and continue the facing the entire way around the way that I have finished this dress and the way that I show you in the sew along is to actually snip into the seam allowance and turn the front seam allowance under and, and slip stitch that to it to the waist seam and then the side seams get slip stitched down the side facings get slip stitched down to finish that but I did end up with a little bit of bulk at those kind of side seam points here and I think if there was a facing that went the whole way around that would eliminate the need to turn one side up and one side down this again is my aversion to having overlocking finishes on woven garments. It's just a personal preference. It, the, the, the pattern does call for you to finish off this front edge and just leave it loose and, and press down. So they, the, the pattern actually has you treat the front outer and lining as a single piece and sew it to the skirt and just press the seam down but I don't like that finish on the inside which is why I've done the method that I, I've mentioned having said that like I say I ended up with a little few little bulky bits they're not I mean because this is a very lightweight fabric I get away with it but there's a few tiny little bulky bits at the sides here and I think I could finish that better so I think I probably either would draft a facing for the front to go all the way around Possibly that would also mean that you could make this as a standalone skirt if you did that and that is something that I really like the idea of as well because this skirt shape I really really like it skims my hips but it's still full and obviously the drama of the thigh high split at the front as well so if you did draft a facing for the, the the front of it then you would end up with a standalone skirt which would be great you could actually then make it as, as like a two-piece so you could have like a separate bodice because you could very easily finish the the, the edge of this and uh, have a bodice and a skirt that you know a top of a skirt that went together and then have separates but that looks like a dress but it wouldn't be quite quite so nipped in at the waist if they were separate pieces but that is very doable i think i would i i i would like to just finesse the finish on the waistline of this just a little bit when i make my next one i will do that and I will film it and I will add it to the playlist for this sew along so that you guys can see how I kind of 2.0, you know, 2.0, how I did the second version of this dress and how I put together the second bodice waistline area of this dress. I will add that to this playlist. I do think that this would be this this neck edge I do think that I could get my head in and out of this. So if I did want to add an invisible zipper to the back section of the bodice i think that would be possible but you'd need to bear in mind that if you did that you would end up with the pull of the zipper hanging down from the bottom of the bodice so you'd end up with like a little black zipper pull hanging down which could look a little bit weird i talked to you guys in the in the in the waffle when i finished this dress about invisible um 
not invisible, that's what I've used, about exposed zips. Some of you were all for it and some of you have, like me, kind of not huge fans. And I don't know why because I love the look on other people, just for me it's not, it, I mean, it's, it's just not something that I would, I, I would gravitate towards and the reason I was thinking an exposed zip is because if you wanted the zip to pull so that it pulled up you'd need to have the it need to be a separating zipper they, they don't do invisible ones of those so you would need to have some kind of decorative zip to kind of pull that off if you wanted to but like I say I think I kind of get away with 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 the backless as is with I mean because it's not really backless is it it covers the bra you can still see the bra but it's not the end of the world I don't know what do you think let me know in the comments down below I really like this I think it's comfortable it's going to be something that I'm going to wear over the summer and very much enjoy definitely going to be making a skirt from the skirt portion of this because I think it's it's lovely and uh, yeah it doesn't take too much fabric and it's actually very easy so it's, it goes together really really quickly so that's nice as well. Hopefully I have covered everything but if you have any questions let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I hope you've enjoyed today's video if you have please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Bye! Bye.